Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new build series. We're doing the Reliant from Polar Lights 1 1,000th. You knew this because you can read the title of the video, but I did a bigger kit review, a more in-depth, shall we say, kit review of this. You can watch that if you want. I'm just going over the parts quickly here. In that review, I said I might build this on the stream and I won't be lighting it. Both those things were lies. I, I'm obviously not building it on a stream because the video here exists. You're watching. This is why. And I will be lighting it, although limited, because we have very little space and my eyeballs and hands aren't that talented. I'm going to start here with the warp nacelles in a second, so let's get going. First things first, we need to remove this tiny little nub at the rear of the nacelle. That represents the beacon light. So off it goes. On the inside of that nacelle, there's a little bit of that nub. So we have to remove that as well. This will get in the way of the fiber optic we want to put in here to light it. P.S. Do not um, do not cut towards yourself, kids. Just, just don't. And of course, we use some sandpaper to make sure that nub is completely gone. With that nub gone, the other side has a little notch in it, which forms a perfect space for our fiber optic. Sliding the fiber optic into that little notch, we find that it is just the right size. We don't have to do any drilling, just slides in there, fits like a glove. Now we have to figure out where we're going to mount our LED. I want it right about there. And unfortunately, that bulkhead right there is in the way. So we need to get rid of most, if not all, of that bulkhead. And we also have to remove that pin. Here are the clear pieces for our nacelles. I am not lighting these up. Uh, a, there's no room. B, they were never lit in the movie, so I am just fine with that. I am installing these the incorrect way. You do not install these front to back. You install these back to front. It's a much easier way to do that. You can see the tab there at the back just hooks underneath. You've got the two tabs in the middle to line up. And then the tab at the end, and it just snaps right into place. Very little fuss and muss, and there you go. Now I need to mark off a couple of places here with my pencil on the end of the nacelle where you see two small lights on the studio model. Now that those holes are marked with the pencil, I need to go through my drill bits and find one that's just the right size for our fiber optic. So we found a drill bit that's the exact diameter of our fiber optic. Now before I started drilling here, I went in with a pin and I pushed little tiny divots into the plastic. This gives your drill bit a recess to set into and makes drilling a lot easier, especially on curved surfaces like this. And now here are our holes drilled out. And putting the fiber optic, test fitting it, you can see it fits perfectly right on through there and we'll be chasing this back here to mount to our LED. And now getting back to that rear bulkhead I discussed earlier, I just need to file out a slot wide enough to insert our 2mm LED. I end up filing this pretty much flush with the inside of the nacelle. I've put off the pylon as long as I can, but uh, now it's time to address Oof, the pylon, which is in three pieces, which is one more than you want. The top piece here also forms the bottom of our phaser cannon that you see on the roll bar. This piece is super thin. It goes together well, I must say. It's snap tight kit, so you expect it to, but yeah, look at how thin that pylon is. Not a ton of space for our wires. So we're going to have to do some creative wiring However, it does fit nice and snug on the nacelle itself, so much so that I ended up not even gluing these in place when I got the two halves together. 
First, I drilled this hole out with my hobby knife. That hole there is flush with the hull and where all the wires from our roll bar and nacelle will be going. Then I channeled that hole out. And I did that by using my little microfiles, handy dandy little things. Just channeled it out big enough to chase two little wires through. With that hole in the pylons in place, I needed a corresponding notch in my nacelles. So once again, I microfiled out a little square section where I could fit my wires through. So we get the pylon in place here, and you can see that that hole in the pylons matches up nicely with the notch in our nacelle. I also drilled a corresponding hole in the edge of our hull where the pylon attaches. So now all of our wires have a happy little place to coalesce before descending into the base. We need to run a wire up through here. So I need to get rid of those tab receivers. I'm just going to be using my round microfile to create a channel in here. On the smaller piece, we have a couple of things to get rid of. There's a little nub of plastic right there and the tab itself and then create a little tiny recess in here to make sure our wires will fit. The other place we need to create a channel is up here. That is completely blocked off. We will not be able to get a wire in there so again using my round microfile I'll be creating all of these channels for our wire. And here's what that recess looks like in the top and on the other side of the pylon. And I'm just test fitting the wire that will be coming in from the top from our roll bar to make sure it has enough room to get down to that hole right there. And hey, it does. I've got all the light blocking done for the nacelles. However, I want to keep the flat black on our grills there, so I'm just gonna mask them off. <laughs> pylons are together and our wires are in place so I have been dealing with our seam work. Uh, this edge right here required some sanding and some smoothing. I first went over it with my Zacto blade and then I went over it with some sandpaper. That wasn't too difficult. The seam up at the front here was the best seam to ever seam because all I really did up here was this with my Zacto blade and it completely vanished. The bear of a seam was that right there. Maybe you can pick it out where those two pieces went together. I used to me a plastic putty and I kept cracking the seam every time I touch it. So I suggest you use a little bit of the old Bondo. Well, we have the primary painting done on our nacelles. This becomes a moot point because I end up manhandling and mangling these things later on and I will have to repaint them. See the light blocking in there, and all that nice blue detail, copper detail, yeah, it's all got to be redone. So I have our little section back there carved out for our LED. Same thing in front, I had to sand that down a bit because there's two bulkheads. We have our holes right up there ready for our fiber optic. I even painted these things right here. As you can see, all has to be repainted. We're showing it off anyways. So now I'm ready for our fiber optics and LEDs. So let's get to that. All right, we have all of our wires and lights in place. I sheathed up the LEDs there with some uh, electrical tape, and then I hot glued them into place. You can see copious amounts of hot glue. We have to bend this one back here with a little bit of heat. That wasn't too big of a problem. Yeah, got our wires in place, and now we're going to be getting these halves together, which turns out to be lots of fun. Our nacelles and pylons are together. I have this other one here still drying, clamped up, taped up, uh, still managed to get a gap. You can see a nice big gap in, near the pylon there. These seams on these guys um, are, aren't too bad. They aren't the best. 
can see a little bit of a seam along here, uh, a little bit on the bottom. It shouldn't be too big of a deal. The seam on the one that's in the rear there drying is much worse. You can see all the paint there has to be redone. It doesn't look too bad on camera, but in person I am not satisfied with it at all. You can see our fiber optics sticking up there, and these are actually uh, redone. This is the second take of this. The first time I did this was not so good. This pylon here, you see, I had that pylon on that nacelle. So uh, that didn't work out so well. I didn't notice this until I looked at those two lights at the front and noticed they were going to the outside. So yeah, with my hobby knife there, as I'm illustrating, I had to literally crack these open after they were dry, gut the wires, rewire it, reassemble it. I lost about a day of work. I was hoping to have the putty done by the time this video went up on Friday, but uh, that was not the case. So I will be puttying these guys up over the weekend. Uh, let's just do a little light test. Got the coin battery in here. Let's see if I can make this work. Uh, let's see. You can see there's the beacon light right there at the back coming through nice and strong and the two lights at the front. I can maneuver this around, coming in nice and strong. Uh, I don't know how you would get the um, nacelle lit up, the actual chiller grill, with all the wires you got going in there. You would, uh, you're a better modeler than I if you can do that. So this is where we're going to leave it for this week. Next week, we are going to focus on that roll bar. That will be an adventure. So I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank all my new subs and all my old subs. You guys are equally rad. And until next time, you guys take care.